All right, guys, so we're out here doing another laser comparison. We have four uh, fairly high-end lasers, kind of unobtainium. Uh, so we thought it was a good opportunity to try to compare these four. Um, compared to the last video, we have almost uh, no cloud coverage, so we're going to have a little bit more photonic barriers to try to push through, so we might uh, have a little bit better comparison uh, between the different settings. We're going to go ahead and start off with a PEC-15. Mike, can you go ahead and turn that on for us? This is the PEC-15 on high power. Can you go ahead and focus that beam? So the PEC-15 is going to be able to keep on letting you focus it till it's almost another laser. There you go. All right, we're going to move on. The next is a Mall C Plus in the mid-range setting. Um, you can see the dot clearly. Uh, that's at 100 yards. Go ahead and push it up to the high power or to the uh, long range setting. There we go. All right, so we're going to move on over to the RAID. This is the RAID on the high power setting on the widest aperture. Zooming in to the long range or tighten the aperture. And then we have a NGAL. This is the NGAL on the widest aperture. Oh, widest aperture. And this is the NGAL at the closest or furthest aperture. All right, now we're gonna put all of them together. Uh, let's make them all on the wide, because at 100 yards, I think we'd all want more of a wide illumination. All right, so going from left to right, we have the PEC-15 on the widest aperture, the mall in the mid-range setting, and the raid, followed by the NGAL, all on the widest aperture. All right, guys, this is the same four lasers at 200 yards. Mike, you go ahead and turn on that peck. At, uh, 200 yards, it's the widest setting. Go ahead and zoom in. All right. If you want to go ahead and get the mall. Mid-range? Mid-range. That is the mall C, C plus, is that correct? C1 plus. C1 plus, 200 yards. Mid-range mode, put it over to high, high range or low, long range. All right. It's the mall in the uh, long range mode. All right. Next, this is the raid in on high power in the widest of uh, the illuminator set at the widest setting. And as we narrow that, that is the narrowest setting of the raid at uh, 200 yards. Last is the NGAL. The NGAL at uh, 200 yards with the widest illumination. And now the most narrow illumination. This is the same three lasers going from left to right. We have the PEC-15, we have the MAL C1+, Plus. we have the Wilcox RAID, and the L3 NGAL. Uh, again, at 300 yards, this is the, we could probably narrow that PEC-15 a little bit, but for the most part, these are all as narrow as they can go, or in, uh, for the MAL's case, the long range setting. Um, but uh, yeah, 300 yards, side by side. Peck, Mall, 
in gal or raid in gal. All right, guys, the berm is getting kind of crowded, so we're going to do each of these individually at 500 yards. Uh, Mike, you can go ahead and turn on the peck. This is the peck 15. You can narrow that beam a little bit. At 500 yards, it's probably the best usable illumination you're going to get out of a uh, full power peck 15. Uh, go ahead and switch over to long range on the mall. In the long range setting on the Mall C1 Plus uh, at 500 yards in the long range setting. All right. This is the RAID X at 500 yards on the Titus setting on the uh, Illuminator at 500 yards. And this is the uh, L3 NGAL at 500 yards with the tightest setting on the illumination. All right. All right, cool. PEC 15 at 100 yards. PEC 15 at 200 yards. PEC 15 at 300 yards. PEC 15 at 500 yards. All right. Going down the line, let's go to the mall. Here's the mall at 100 yards. Here's the mall at 200 yards, 300 yards, and 500 yards. All right. Here's the raid at 100 yards, at 200 yards, 300 yards. 500 yards and lastly the ingal at 100 yards at 200 yards at 300 yards and lastly 500 yards all right guys something that's kind of unique from the raid and the mall is that they have a flood setting uh, mike if you can go ahead and hit the uh, mall this is the flood setting on the mall uh, it's meant for close range if you can move it a little bit more to your left so we get that dot there you go so the illumination uh, is pretty wide and then we have a a, a low power dot uh, let's go ahead and see the raid This is the raid on the flood setting. Uh, similar, but I think the uh, mall is probably putting out just a little bit more on that illuminator. Cool. All right, guys. So uh, Mike and I just finished up the laser comparison uh, for these four lasers. Uh, Peck 15, a mall, a raid, and an in -gal. Um We're gonna go each through each one and just kind of give our personal thoughts on them and uh, just kind of see some of the give and take. None, I don't think any of these lasers, I think we'd agree that no laser does it perfectly. Every, all of them have kind of a give and take. Yeah. Um, so anyways, we're trying to kind of go through some of those. So Mike can show off the pack. The old standby, right? Yeah. I mean, been around for if you can get a good one. Yeah. I mean, this one, I don't see yours is made in September of 08. Clean unit. Yeah. Uh, super powerful. Arguably, you know, built, built like a brick shit house. Yeah. You know, very, Rarely do you hear about these breaking or anything. Um, you know, biggest thing for me, I've kind of got smaller hands. So, you know, coming up and hitting the button on the top is, is kind of the, the downside for me on the PEC 15. Um, but, you know, the switching on it and everything is good once you know where all your settings and everything are. Um, it's light. Yeah. Again, really durable. Just, just awesome unit. I don't think they're ever really going to go away. But for me, my little baby hands, you know, coming up and hitting that button on the top is, is kind of a pain in the butt. But on this setup here, you know, you've got your dual switch, white light in the front, and then you've got the, the laser and stuff in the back. So that negates the issue of needing to hit the button on the top. Until your pressure pad fails. <laughs> Until your pressure pad fails, right. So. I think my my biggest com com complaint, again, the, the PEC, my, I've gotten lucky with, with this PEC. This PEC has, has treated me really well. Um, I, I've had a, a few of the little bits that show up in the illuminator. Um, the biggest issue that's kind of driven me nuts is if you don't, for me, if I haven't gotten the PEC set up perfectly where I want it on the rifle, 
this battery cap, this like harsh corner, will catch my kind of the, the meat of my thumb right here, and that bone will just kind of like sure. rub on there. So you, for me, I have to get the, the rifle or the laser just exactly where I want it on the rifle to avoid that. But otherwise, I've been pretty happy with mine. And, and typically, I would say, hey, this is the, the laser I would recommend because I've had a good run with it. But the issue is it's still hit or miss. I've seen some that look really rough. Um, the at PLC was actually our the first comparison we did. And it was like, oh my gosh, what's happening? PLC is abysmal. It's garbage. It's garbage. Um, but this has been good. But again, um, while this is an older model, I've seen uh, a whole bunch of different models that have had, had problems. Like so, we saw on the LA5 tonight. Yeah, the LA5 struggled. There was a... It's literally like, so you have a circle, and it was literally just like a line through the entire yeah. thing. <laughs> Looks like, no look like Cyclops just cut it in half. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyways, uh, it's old standby, but... Uh, if you are going to buy one of those on the gray market, See if you make sure you can get somebody to take pictures of the Illuminator through it because yeah. you're not going to know what you're going to get. Case in point, the LA5 that we saw tonight was absolutely horrendous. Um, I, I would never spend any money on, on what we saw on that tonight, no. unfortunately, for yeah. the owner of that one. That, that sucks. But uh, yeah. But yeah. All right. 15. Moving on. Let's go to the mall. Molly, Molly, Molly. The mall. Um, this one's my personal unit. I've had this for you know about two years. Um, pros to the mall, I think arguably of all these lasers that we're going to talk about tonight, it is hands down the most ergonomic and the most easy to remember your, your switching. You know, there's you know, your little slider right there that goes into three, three separate little uh, short range, mid range, and then long range, and then you have a high low on each of those. It's just super easy. It's easy to get to, you know, if you're going into a room or you come right out of the room and you want to go to a longer range, it's, it's just right there. Um, cons to the mall, it eats batteries for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, can't leave it on, on standby. It will just, it'll just die uh, very, very fast. Um, other cons to the mall, zeroing it, if you have your light set up underneath like this, is a pain in the ass because uh, your, one of your, I can't remember if it's your left or right or your up and down is underneath the bottom there. Um, lastly, it's heavy. It's really heavy. Yeah. Um, it's probably about four, I think four ounces heavier than a, than a PEC 15. Yeah. But um, the illumination is fantastic. It's the only civilian class laser that hangs with the full power stuff, as you'll see in the video. Um, the only thing that you don't have is that really, really bright laser. Um, you can also see in the video too the divergence of the beams yep. on the uh, on the, the full power ones where you just you know you just have the regular uh, dot there from the mall. But um, I really like it for a civilian class laser. It's the best you can get, hands down. Yeah. And right now, the way prices are, you know, early twenty twenty, gray market PEC fifteens are bringing two thousand dollars plus right now. They're asking yeah. high dollar for those ones. Yeah, super high dollar. The mall you can get for you know brand new for like 27, 28. So it's one of those things where you gotta kinda, you know, say, well, do I wanna risk it on a gray market peck, or do I just get a brand new mall that at least has a, a minuscule one year of warranty support? <laughs> what's nice about the mall is even on that secondary market, um, I had one for a while, I ended up selling it to try to uh, finance the raid. Um, but um, I didn't lose too much in terms of what I had into it when I tried to put it on the secondary market used. So there's another benefit there. They, they hold their value fairly well. Yep. Um, I think hands down, the mall has the best controls. It has the most ergonomic, well thought out controls um, in terms of being able to switch between things, just like Mike was saying. Um, be able to find that stuff quickly and not be trying to go, okay, what setting am I on? Which one do I need to be mm -hmm. on? Um, being able to quickly do that uh, is, is pretty impressive. Um, I would say in terms of output, it, it holds, holds up with everybody else. It, it's um, the laser, like you were saying, isn't gonna put out quite as much as the full power units, but illumination is the name of the game. I mean, laser, the actual laser itself rarely is the hindrance. It's usually the illumination when you start having, like we had tonight, we had some photonic barriers, big moon, you know, well, well lit night. Um, that's typically where illuminators struggle, and this one did great. Um, I'd say my, I have probably three biggest complaints with the mall. Um, 
One is going to be the, uh, the battery life, like he was saying. Um, it sounds like that has just been consistent across everybody, is it's just the battery life just gets drained fairly quickly. Um, the third is the weight. Um, I think it is great on a shorter rifle. When you start having a longer rifle, start putting that weight further out, and most of the time if you're running, if you're at the point you're buying a laser, you probably have a suppressor on there as well. And as you put that further and further out, that gets, uh, gets more and more noticeable. Um, the last thing that stood out to me, there was one other thing that was driving me nuts on the, uh, on the mall. Oh, in the long range setting, they have this little safety nubbin lock, lockout. Um, trying to do that with one hand while wearing night vision um, can be kind of a pain. Um, I, I, I wish there was either a way to deactivate that or, or something. I'm sure you could break it. We could probably just put a piece of electrical tape over Yeah, it. electrical tape works right. Um, um, but otherwise, I think, that, I think the mall, it's, I mean, especially for the price, compared to what full power units, what, what people are asking for now, it's a hard thing to beat. Yep. What's next? All, All right. right, so next is the Wilcox Raid. Um, I'll let you go first. Okay. Well, this is your this is your unit, uh, so I have a little bit of time with it. Giggity. Um, <laughs> first impressions with the raid, man. There's a lot of buttons on there. <laughs> there's a whole lot of stuff going on in a very very small, tight little package. Uh, in terms of its output and everything, uh, it's one of the new the new gen lasers like the Mall, like the Engal. It's incredibly clean. Yep. Um, you know, the power up, power down is a super smooth little little roller button here. Freaking awesome. Um, ergonomically, uh, it's a little bit tough to reach because the button is... We're getting closer because you're... Yeah, sorry. So the button is on the, the bottom right side. And if you're a right-handed shooter, you got to really come over the top to, to get that guy. So ergonomically, not really a fan. It's kind of hard to hit that. Um, I guess if you ride your hand back a little bit, it's not, not too bad. You can get used to it. Um, but yeah, just a, a, a lot going on, but it's super compact, looks freaking sweet. Um, it's even got a shop counter in it. Yeah, it does yeah. have a shop counter, which I haven't already find yet. Um, I think he hit on a lot of things I, I, I like and don't like about it. Um, in terms of output, it's definitely contending with some of the, you know, with the NGAL and the mall. Um, it's definitely putting out a lot, uh, especially for, you know, the, that small of a package, which is, you know, that should be a pretty standard thing that we're, we're looking for at this point. Um, the old school way of PEX, while the output is, is pretty good, they're big units. They're taking up a lot of rail space. Uh, these are definitely getting smaller, which has been fantastic. Um, I'd say one of the things that took a second to, to enjoy, but now I kind of like, is having the laser in line with the barrel oh, yeah. instead of it being off center, which isn't a huge deal. Um, but for, for zeroing this, you pretty much turn on your red dot and co-witness the viz laser and you're pretty much on paper. You're good to go. Um, depending on what you want to do with a, another laser, you might need to have an offset. There's, there's different ways to do this, but for, for this, you can pretty much just co-witness it to your uh, red dot and you're, you're good to go. Um, complaints. Um, complaints, I would say the biggest thing is probably going to be that ergo. Um, getting my hand over there, I have a little bit bigger hands, so it doesn't bother me too much. Um, but what was nice about this focus ring is it's nice and smooth and, and tactile, but when you have your thumb over top, the meat of my thumb falls right on top of that. So when I'm moving, I'm going to be adjusting that illuminator. Um, but other than that, the controls, I, I agree, are in terms of the amount of, of different configurations you can have can be complicated. Um, as how I've configured it, I've kind of made it so it, it works for me where you have a low power setting, which for me, I'm typically running in a flood setting with a dot and then a high power, which is a typical what you see from, from most high power units. Um, I, those are the two settings I live in. These adjustment arrows and buttons up here where you can set how bright the, the laser is and how bright the illuminator is, um, is nice, but I rarely touch these. These are pretty much, I got them figured out how I like them, and then the, um, the switch kind of moves between the two points that I end up using. 
Um, but I think he's right. It is it is kind of uh, a complicated unit. Yeah. Lastly, you know, the Ed Gal. Well, this is my first time actually seeing one of these and putting hands on it. Um, if you're familiar with the controls and the switching on the pack, then this shouldn't be you know, too, too much different than that. It's really just a, a newer, more compact, lighter weight PEC 15 with the new uh, illumination technology. Um, it's a really, really cool unit. Um, hands down the brightest vis laser, vis yeah. laser yeah. Of, of all the units here, without question. Um, ergonomically, this thing is pretty awesome. It's the button, the fire button, just right there in the center. Let's see, we can just go. Comes along. Yeah. Yeah, that guy. It's just right there in the middle, man. It's just easy to get to. Love that. No need for any additional pressure pads or anything like that. Just, just hit it, top button. It's super easy to get to, even with small hands like mine. Um, we're, you do have to zero, I believe, I'm pretty confident in this. You do have to zero the laser within the illuminator if you want it to be, be dead center, whereas I don't think you have to do that on the raid. You don't have to do that on the mall, but again, sharing similarities to its older counterpart, PEC-15, you do have to align that laser um, within the illuminator. This one out of the box wasn't too far off or anything like that, but uh, lightweight, super compact, sits low to the rail, really, really cool unit. I like it a lot. I'll look at the wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, I agree almost completely on that stuff. Uh, the the uh, ergonomics, which has been a, a big deal, I think, from for most of my lasers, which has been the, the PEC and the RAID, uh, it definitely beats that. Um, I think the only contender it would have is the mall in, term, in terms of ergos, but it, when it's able to, to get rid of that weight issue with the mall and get rid of the battery issue, which I, I guess we'll find out whether how the, how the batteries hold up. Um, that, that, that's a pretty big uh, uh, feather in its cap. Um, so Ergo's uh, output, like you will see from the video, is at a certain point, I think we've gotten to a point where some of these higher end units are all right next to each other in terms of output. Uh, the, the, he's right though on the uh, high laser setting. Um, it is, it, it, it pretty much stomps all the other ones in Viz Laser. Now, admittedly, we don't use Viz Laser all that much, but it is fun to act like you have your own lightsaber. Makes zeroing much, much easier. Yeah. You know, you could probably zero that thing midday yeah. sun if you wanted to. Yeah. You know, the way I zero, I will put my sights and my Viz Laser at the furthest distance that I can see and just, just co-align them. Because at that point, you know, the furthest that you're going to be off at say 300 yards, like I zero my laser on this one, is going to be the distance between here and here. And as long as you know your holds, that's all you have to account for. Then again, when you double that distance and get out to 600 yards, you're only again off that distance on the other side with a conversion zero. So, yeah. um, this lasers definitely make that much easier to, to do. I think, in terms of complaints on on the Ingal, it's a pretty short list of complaints. Um, one would be that the pressure switch is a proprietary switch. Mm -hmm. um, so you can only use the L3's pressure switch. I'm sure there'll be manufacturers that will show up that'll start do, making pressure switches. Sure. I'm sure they're also gonna charge a premium since they're, that is the, the short list of, mm -hmm. of users that can have it. Um, so the pressure switch is an issue and that focus ring that I said on the RAID, which was really uh, smooth to, to rotate, this is, is very stiff. Now this is a brand new unit. Um, granted the, the RAID is a brand new unit, but on, on this one it definitely is a lot stiffer. Um, but otherwise, aside from what, this, what, what, the, what people are asking for on the internet for this unit, which I think I've seen them go up for seven, is the highest I've seen, um, they're just asking a lot of money for these. So and, and so we so Mike and I have talked about some of these different laser units and the the just like night vision, I would argue that the um, return on investment is kind of a diminishing return as you start going up. Mm -hmm. All these lasers I think are very very capable. When you start getting into the really high end, including the ray in this, I'd say I'd include all these in there. Uh, the return on investment diminishes as you go up that up that that price chain. You are not getting five thousand dollars more out of that unit than you are out of the $2,700 mall. I agree, 100% agree. Um, 
It is awesome. It's very awesome. It's but not five thousand. Not five thousand dollars. Awesome. Now, I think civilians should be able to get these freely and have them more in the what four thousand dollar range is what you're looking at. Let's just let's just go ahead and drop that number. Down. Well, I think I think from the factory these are about four grand. Okay. So that's about what Uncle Sam's paying. Um, so for these units, uh, that I think four thousand is more is more reasonable. Mm -hmm. But the secondary market charging seven grand for it, I think, is ridiculous. Is ridiculous. Um, I have heard of some uh, uh, waterproof issues out of these from the secondary market. I've heard that too. So I've heard that's why they're on the secondary. Market. Yeah. So something to look out for on the ingals is there is on the secondary market a apparently a, a lot that is uh, out there due to some, due to some uh, waterproofing issues that they were, they, that's how they got to the market. Yeah. There are exceptions to that. Uh, this is uh, not one of those units, um, but- uh, Next part of the video, we're gonna go dunk it in a five gallon bucket of water. <laughs> <laughs> we're, going, we're going swimming. <laughs> Sorry, Derek. Uh -huh. um, so anyways, I, I think it's a, a pretty solid unit. Right, cool. But is there, a, have you got any thoughts after we've tested the, the I think the, the cream of the crop in terms of lasers? Um, they all get the job done. Yeah. In their own unique ways, shapes, and forms. Um, it's just gonna kind of come down to user preference and, and budget. Um, yeah. I think I think all of them seem to have kind of slightly different uh, pros and cons to them. Oh, something we I don't know if we mentioned and we I know we touched on it in the video is the flood function oh, from yeah. the mall and the raid have a flood function for close range stuff. The mall is a lot more intuitive to switch to that setting than back to a high to a long range setting, mm -hmm. um, but it's fast. It is fast, um, but they both have them. The Peck and the Ingal do not. But back to that point of all of these have some some pros and cons. I think the the biggest thing is pick your laser and use it. Can you do that with? Uh, I think the like the diffuser cap. That that, that might be it. That might be how they, how they accomplish yeah. that. Which I guess isn't too bad because with a shoot at the end, yeah. you just bam, just throw that right off there. And then be back on. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. What to play with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think more than anything, find your laser that works for you and um, and use it. Get out and shoot with it. Don't, uh, don't just let it sit on your wall and do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't get a unit that doesn't have an illuminator built in. Yeah, it's just a waste of money. I had a D-ball I squared. Did you ever have I squared? I squared. Don't bother. I know they make an IR one that one of them that has an IR laser and an IR illuminator, but there's no easy way to zero that. So you're doing it all under night vision, which is that's uh, A three. Yeah. So if you're gonna do a D-ball, go ahead and go to an A three. But two. Yeah. Like that big old pig. Yeah. I mean, it does have a lot of output. It does. Um, but yeah. I think uh, I think that's about it. So if you all have any questions, whatever, put them in the comments and see if we can't get some answers for you. <laughs> <laughs>